Alvarez here, uh, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Here to talk, talk and shop a mania coming up this weekend. <laughs> talk and shop a mania too, I might add. Rocky Romero here, Carl Anderson here. Man, we got a lot of stuff coming up. And during the break, Rocky's just bombarding me with information and showtimes <laughs> and pre shows and pay per view and Impact Plus app. So, Rocky, the easiest thing to do is just throw to you. Tell us all about this show yeah. coming up this weekend well, and tonight. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, Brian uh, uh, and Mike. You know what's up? Uh, but yeah, tonight is we we're actually dropping a pre-show special, Talking Shop and Mania Two pre-show live on our YouTube channel. It's going to be at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and it's going to be awesome. We just basically preview the show. We talk about everything that went into making Talking Shop and Mania Two. So the pre-show tonight, we can. I mean, is, are there going to be any clips from the last show, any clips from the upcoming show, or is this just you guys sitting around and drinking and, and talking about it? Sitting around, drinking and talking about it. Right. <laughs> and hanging yeah. out, yeah. Excellent. That's what we do best, yeah. Excellent. And Carl, I'll go to you. Tell us about the show this weekend. Let's get this all out of the way first. If you guys want to see Talking Shop of Mania 2, this is how to do it. I got to be honest, Brian, you're the first person who's ever talked to Rocky first because me and Gallo just, just snatch it immediately. Uh, it's good. It's a good thing because Rock's the most professional and keeps us going. Talking Shop of Mania 2, the sequel to literally the worst pay-per-view ever. I just, I, like I've said, uh, uh, lies 10 p.m. on the Fight app and also on pay-per-view, right? Rock Dish and Direct TV. You can search down pay-per-view. Fourteen ninety nine. It's a sequel to the worst pay-per-view ever. I just rewatched it again today just to, just to kind of – get myself in the mood and get myself in the mode. And I realized that I'm still 10 minutes in, I'm still crying, laughing hard. Then I fast forward a little farther just to see where we're at. I start laughing, crying again. Then I watch the main event and I realized that this is so terrible that hopefully by the main event, everyone's so uh, inebriated or lit. finished <laughs> or lit lube to the max that they just go, this is really, really funny. Well, that's basically we're hoping that nobody really remembers by the by the end because <laughs> it's the same crap right we're still in the middle of a pandemic we're still shooting with no people it's but it, the, the best part about this is it's three best friends for shoot me gallows and rocky sitting there doing commentary over some really bad wrestling which horrific is the main staple times. yes <laughs> horrific at times now, is there a percentage on how much worse this show will be? And, and more so, because I like percentages, is there a percentage on how many more little people that will be involved in the making of this uh, Talking Shop of Mania? There, you know, there, so the little people are still there. Uh, and, 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 and the worst little person from the first one, where Talking Shop of Mania won, I feel like, was it George North versus Stump Kowalski? And we realized that neither of them had been trained to even get in the ring or do anything for, like, inside the professional wrestling business. So what do you have to do? You have to bring both of them back because uh, you got to have Stump Kowalski who makes a well, – I I'm, I'm guess I'm blowing it, but who cares, right? He, he makes a run-in, and his run-in makes us all fall off the commentary table laughing because it's just – Greatest run-in in, in history. Yeah. And the poor guy's trying to carry a chair, and like he, the chair is heavier than he is. It's <laughs> – <laughs> Which, hey, it's all fun. It's all it's it's a yes, and Swaggle is there, of course, again because you got to bring him back. But now, I believe that the last time we were on, I think it was the uh, follow up to Talking Shop of Mania One, and and Gallows was talking about how, or maybe it was before the show. But anyway, he said something like, "Yeah, I started watching it, and <laughs> God, it was horrible. And then I started <laughs> drinking, and then it was okay by the end. Is that where we are for this show as well?" Yes. Like, <laughs> Short let, answer, yes. Let me explain that one, Brian. So I, I, I watched Talking Shop of Mania 1 back, right? We didn't know what kind of territory we were going into, right? So I sit and watched it by myself. And I don't think I smiled once. And I went, oh, no. Like, guys. So I sent a group text. I said, nope, nah, it's over. We can't release it. Nope. Cancel it. And they're like, God, dude, we can't cancel it. Now we've already talked to Fight TV and these pay-per-view companies into allowing us to put this Signed out. Signed contracts. Yeah. yeah. So I said, well, then we got to at least do an opening. So that was where it was. Gallo's, Gallo said he watched it back and went, oh, no. Uh-oh. Big, big problem. <laughs> then he went to the gas station and got a bottle of wine and, and watched it back. And go, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> yes, that's exactly where Talking Shop Media 2 is. Man, if, I mean, uh, if it's good with wine, then if you're drinking something harder, it's probably great. I say edibles well, yeah. would make it fantastic. Well, like right. you said, though, like, Brian, you watched it sober. And, and hey, I, I've been I've watched Talking Shop Mania 2 sober every time. 
And I started coughing, wheezing in the, in the bed that I woke my six year old up because he was laying with me. And man, I go, that's a pretty good sign, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did, you know, I did enjoy it sober, but I mean, I'm not averse to the idea of of drinking during the second one and find out if I well, like I it think, even more. Please do. <laughs> so, so <laughs> the other, do. I mean. <laughs> Obviously, like Gallo's explained, or one of you explained this to me, that like as soon, as, I think it was you, Carl, like as soon as you guys were released from WWE, I mean, Gallo's was just, he immediately had all these ideas and he'd already practically written this whole talk in Choppamania. Yeah, you know, let, let me explain, right? So we got that, we got a video from Vince McMahon saying that we were, you know, there's going to be some layoffs. And, and I went, <laughs> poor guys, you know. And then Zack Ryder and Hawkins start messaging us like, oh, man, I'm worried. I'm going, yeah, you guys, you guys should be because <laughs> we're not. All of a sudden, I see Carano calling me and I'm going, man, I, I wonder if Carano just wants to, you know, get, give me a little midday call to give him a pep because he's had a hard day. Then he fires me and I go, what? And then the Gallows has an even better story where Gallo says Carano's calling. He answers and goes, hey, boss. And he goes, hey, I just got the phone with your partner, Gallows. And Gallows goes, for what? Well, I just fired him. Like that's how confused we were. So I, I was five minutes into getting canned from the Fed, and I see Gallo's calling me. I said, "No, I'm not ready for this right now, man." And about an hour and a half later, he calls back, and I said, "He starts spitting this pay per view off." And I said, "No, nah, nah, what are you talking about, dude? I'm out." Like Rock, right? They called you too. Yeah, he, yeah. he told us he's going to do it with or without us, and I was like, "Without, pal." <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely without this sounds horrible then we're taping and then we're recording part one and we're going this is horrible right <laughs> I remember I, brian i was confused during the whole first taping i don't know what the hell was going on <laughs> i was trying to figure it out and i was like wait what there's a there's a what on a tree there's a contract on a tree well what the co-? you asked right gals well what's the contract for yeah well, I, I think i said it on commentary i said well he goes, he wins the briefcase. This is all Gallo's booking. I said, okay, well, what does he win? And Gallo goes, I don't know, briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the briefcase. It's just a briefcase on a tree match. Yeah. Who well, said like there the, had to be something in it? Yeah, like yeah. talking shop, Mania won, right? The, ti- the title was a, a 24-7 title for some reason, but that's just completely been forgotten about for part two. It's just we, Yeah, we forgot my to title. add that into the storyline. Yeah. yeah, now okay, it's the main so event title. I got to ask, <laughs> there, there's a missing part of this story here. So you said that he came up with this idea, and you just yeah. said we're not going to be involved. Then the next thing you tell me is you're filming. How did you get yeah. from, dude, we're not going to be involved, to, ah, what the hell, let's just do this? Gallows pestering us, dude. Like you said, he's, I'm gonna do it with you or without you. Let, let, let just to let you know, and I'm and then like we started, you know. So we we're talking every day, and I'm kind of going like, what do you mean, you know? Like just tell me. Then he starts tell he starts right. He wrote the Gallows wrote the whole part one, right? Talking shop mania one, and, and I'm reading it going, I mean, you're trying to think about a briefcase on a hill was his idea, and like he wanted a a, a hardcore little person match and. I'm just going, and, and you got to remember this. We taped this in July, right, where the pandemic is just, or this COVID thing is just kind of f- fresh. And so I don't even know what he's t- talking about. I was like, why would anybody watch this? So he talked us into it, is what it was. And being friends, we realized we needed to do it. But it, it, if I can explain, we, we got to, so in the middle of a pandemic, right? So we got to Gallows' house July 6th, for example. And all the boys haven't seen each other because none of us have been on the road. So everyone proceeds to just get hammered, hammered. Then the first day of taping, me and Rocky are out there ready to go, ready to rock and roll. And Gallo's wife comes out and goes, sorry, I just woke him up. I, I went in there and said, hey, Chad and Rocky are here. And Gallo said, for what? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's how that's how Rocky and the boys were. <laughs> they shoot a pay-per-view you force us into, pal. So, so when this out. thing when this thing aired, I mean, as noted, I mean, you can watch this on traditional pay per view. What did the cable company say? I guess I actually they probably would have said something before it even aired because they got the the tape or whatever, right? So, what did they have to say about this? I mean, did they have any requests like, dude, like you got to take this out or or what did they say? And what did they we say did, afterwards after I'll, it was apparently a success? I'll I'll tell you the truth, uh, Brian, is, is that the uh, in demand wouldn't take it. For for it, it took us. We had to negotiate with in demand and resend it to them about six or seven times. Our poor uh, producer and editor, director Mike Moran, who helped us out on this, uh, he's dealing with the in demand right now because they don't want to take the second one as well. So wow. we may end up being on in demand. We may not. I'm not really sure. It's it's all a toss up. We'll hope we're going to find out in the next couple of hours. Uh, but uh, Carl in sounds like is- this is news to him. Is that news <laughs> to you? <laughs> No, the last no. Twenty four hours have been very stressful. Let's just no, let's just say I, that. Yeah, I, I knew that in demand wasn't gonna. So like, try, try, like you were trying to pitch this thing in 
the man's used to like, you know, sold out UFC shows in Australia or, or wherever they're at in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile right. arena. And then we get on the phone, three idiots. And we start pitching this idea to, to run a show in the backyard with no name. Well, names, I guess. But, you know, so, so somehow we sold it. Then the, the second we started getting buys from fight TV, like the, the buys were, were, man, I, I'm telling you, they were, I promised I wouldn't do part two if they weren't good. Well, the, the head of fight told us, said, listen, you guys need to knock another one out quick. And I'm going, oh, no. He's like, Let, let's get this going for three or four or five a year because it was it did good. And so the the, guy, the the person that runs fight started started hitting us. The person that ran fight started hitting us up about doing another one. So so can you give us any sort of information about what in demand either wasn't happy about the first time or what they're not happy about this time? Is there like a specific sort There's, of thing? Probably well, everything. They. they- <laughs> They they were like they said the content was passable it was fine but they said uh but they they weren't happy with the uh the production of it so like they didn't like the lighting that's the point they didn't like the captions they didn't like the sound and that's what we told them was like the whole point of this is that it's bad you know and like this is we're we're trying to give you the worst pay per view ever but it was so it was so bad that they wouldn't accept it and we had to like jump through hoops just to get it on so we're dealing with that right now Brian and I'm telling you it it, it it's it's making me a little nervous. I don't I don't I don't think they understood the concept of us saying worst pay per view ever. They were like, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> they have a quality control, and I guess we don't meet their quality control. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of weird when you think about it because I mean, I'm trying to imagine what Talking Shop of Mania won. Whether it would like have been better or worse if it had like this preposterously good WWE production. Like, if you have that good a production, but that horrible a content, is that better or worse than content well, and production? I'll, t- I'll tell yeah. you what, Brian. Let we him explain out, here. We're, we're about to find out because we really took one of the matches, we took up a notch. We actually used pretty much the whole, almost the whole budget for this one match. Chico, El Luchador versus Chavo Guerrero Jr. In a Lucha Libre death match where it's not a Lucha Libre death match where like we're just using that term loosely and there might be blood or, you know, a table broken or something. No, a man must die. You can bring any weapon you choose to this battle and someone must die and there must be a winner. This might be yeah. the end of Chavo or Chico El Luchador. Correct. One of and them this, will, One of them will pass away. Wow. And, and 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 I blew the budget. We're actually completely in the red right now. And this is a 100 percent truth. We're 100 percent in the red because I blew the budget on this Matrix Reloaded style cinematic match where everything happens. <laughs> everything and anything happens. Gunshots. There's explosions. There's uh, bazookas. There's. All kinds of stuff. I don't want to ruin it too much, but this is the craziest cinematic match that has ever happened in professional wrestling, and uh, we're setting the bar really high on this one. Wow. Didn't mean to do that because it was meant to be bad, but somehow, I don't know. We were watching it, and I go, <laughs> like, me and Gallows were watching it at, 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 at Gallows' house, and Rocky presented this to us, and like, we look at him and go, what? And, like, and the producer, the guy that's editing our stuff in Atlanta goes, geez, I wish I didn't watch that because it's so good that he felt like he wasn't doing good enough. <laughs> it almost doesn't make it almost doesn't even fit. Well, just wait till you see it. Because then, because then after the, as soon as the Chavo versus Chico match happens, well, it goes straight to ball for ball, and that's Sex Ferguson versus Chad. Too bad where they're trying to take each other's testicles off the whole All match. Right. Stand by, everybody. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Carl Anderson, Rocky Romero here today, talking talking Chopamania. And Carl, the floor is yours. 90 seconds. Let's talk about these shows tonight and this weekend. Talk and shop a mania to the second hashtag second worst pay-per-view ever Friday the 13th on the fight app on worldwide pay-per-view man you've got sex Ferguson versus Chad too bad in a ball for ball match you got Chico El Luchador versus Chavo Guerrero in a in a Lucha Libre death match where there's matrix like gunshots and an actual person has to die you've got the nature boy Paul Lee who's possibly the worst professional wrestler in the entire world versus George North who hasn't even been trained and is getting in the ring. You've got rapid delivery Rory Fox, who who couldn't get over in 1999, but we happened to fly him in and put him in a hotel. How did we get stuck doing that? Enjoy yourself. Sit back, have a beer, and just be entertained and have fun, man. And then Saturday night, turning point on the Impact Plus app, you got 
the Good Brothers versus the North for the Impact Tag Team Championships, and we're going to win those titles and 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 take our rightful uh, uh, air as the greatest tag team in the entire world, man. Um, but most importantly, enjoy Talking Shop Mania too, Rock. Hashtag Talking Shop Mania too. If we sell enough, there'll be a three when we can complete the trilogy. Oh so my smokes. God, a trilogy! <laughs> Holy Jesus. smokes! I know. So by the way, that Carl said the second worst pay per view of all time. So that means this one's better than the last one. <laughs> Whatever that means. I think, I think it, it is. is. Wow. Oh God, Carl, Don't my hand to God, please get the old man Les Thatcher to watch. Do it if you. Can oh get him my to watch. God, are you oh, kidding please. me? <laughs> Hey, I, think I want, yeah. want Cornette to watch it. Oh, Lord. Well, listen, everybody, we're totally out of time here. I want to thank you all for li- for listening today. And obviously, everybody, in- enjoy the show this weekend. There's Turning Point. There's Talking Shop of Mania. There's the pre-show tonight on the YouTube page. Check it out. And thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.